Hello and welcome to the zoo. Today we're going to talk about a digital workplace and who's the boss in the digital workplace. It used to be an IT and facility management ordeal, but that's changed. And with me today is Monica Paulbach, who is the people person, head of all people at BMC Software. Uh, she has an illustrious career at Salesforce.com as well, and she has in the few months, oh, well, about a year now, that she spent at BMC, transformed the workplace and made it more Google-esque, if you will. Something that I, although I work from home, truly enjoy. So welcome to the zoo again, Monica. Thank you, nice to be here. You recently was put in charge of not only the people and how we recruit and so on, traditional HR role, but you are now also in charge of the workplace as a whole. How has that changed your day-to-day -day responsibilities? What is it you look at now that you didn't necessarily think about before? Yeah, sure. I'm actually going to go back and answer one of the questions you kind of uh, asked somewhat in jest, which is, who's the boss? I think you were uh, talking about my new title. It's That's actually not the, right, the answer. The way to think about the digital workplace is the employee is the boss. And I think the other way to think about it is just like many companies like BMC, like Salesforce and others focus as much as possible around putting the customer at the center of the universe and building an ecosystem around the customer. What the digital workplace is about, among other things, is putting the employee in the center of our ecosystem. So what does that mean? Well, it means that instead of thinking in terms of enterprise systems that are written typically for the owners of time and, uh, time and expense, or HR for that matter, you really reimagine the technology and the experience in terms of, well, what's the right thing for the employee? So uh, from a technical standpoint, that means you use different language, you use different UIs, it needs to be mobile. You shield the employee from the sausage making, which is almost always ugly. Um, and you really just think about what is the experience for them and is it easy, is it, uh, is it collaborative, is it intuitive? Um, so that's, that's really the way I think about it. That's the way we think about it at BMC and that's the way we think about it on behalf of our customers is to reinvent the experience of being inside the company, focusing on, on how that experience can come to the front uh, versus continuing to disappoint our employees, um, especially when we have an amazing customer experience. Sometimes our employees look internally and that's really important. With their with their experience of then of being a, a an employee, so that for me is the vision of the digital workplace is to put the employee uh, in the middle of what it is that we are building uh, to make sure that we're focused on their experience. So the people are the boss. Then how can I, as the boss, have a say? How do I register my needs and demands? Because many of us have fairly well stocked homes where we use Twitter and Facebook, where we, use, we can uh, you know, record anything on any type of device, where there's music or, or TV, and we don't even have to be in the house. The house knows where I am and when I'm coming. How do I, how do I get that? How do I help influence the workplace from a technology standpoint as I'm employed? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a, I'll give you a couple of answers. Yeah. If we use the right, there are numerous ways for employees to give us feedback. Uh, one of the things that we don't do today, typically in, in companies, I think BMC does a, does a good job, is have a way for employees to give us that feedback. Um, and the feedback needs to be more than just, uh, you know, was the ticket closed on time or, or did you get your provisioning? The feedback needs to be true feedback on how I felt. Am I productive? Um, was my issue resolved, yes or no? And so I think part of the digital workplace, just like in our consumer-based apps, allows for us to have a lot of feedback. The second thing that the digital workplace allows is the technology gives us feedback by virtue of data. So think about a new hire experience. Throughout the, the experience or the process, we're getting feedback from 
from that employee. They're either opening things we've asked them to open or not, that's feedback, um, or they are giving us input, um, which is either good or bad. Um, if you're using technology like our technology, which is uh, HR case management, where employees can go to file information about HR, uh, whatever HR services they might need, that's rich with information because it tells us what's happening either during a certain period of time or in a certain location. Um, and the, the goal then is to insert yourself in that process to change that experience for the better. So I think those are two key ways that the digital workplace, if we do it right, allows the employees to have a very strong voice. So one reason people want to move to a digital workplace is it creates greater employee engagement. Mm -hmm. What is what is that? Think about it in terms of what we do in our personal lives. Um, I'll tell you a story. I um, EDM is my favorite music. I love SoundCloud, but SoundCloud is changing their pricing policies, and in general, the experience is getting worse, not better. Electronic, electronic dance music. You was referring to. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And so my children, uh, who are both millennials, convinced me to look at iMusic. Um, I downloaded the the app and I spent probably 45 minutes customizing my experience with the app, which will then in turn customize my music. Um, the point there is if I'm willing to spend 45 minutes doing anything on Apple's behalf, I'm absolutely going to be willing to do uh, to make an investment in on my company's behalf. So part of what happens if we uh, what should be happening is that we involve the employees more that we focus more on the user um, and less on an intermediary, whether it's an HR person, a, an ops person, an IT person, and we should make an experience engaging for that employee so that they will actually be the direct contributor to the work, whether it's setting up their uh, their new hire profile or their IT provisioning requests or anything else that we, we might want, um, we need to disrupt that by going straight to the user. They're willing to do it, and especially if we make it engaging. Um, one of the things I recently did myself um, was a compliance training course. As you know, at BMC, a lot of that's online. And if we're being honest, a lot of times those are very stale. Uh, and I give major credit to our team because they made it very interactive and there was a lot of gaming um, uh, ideas that were embedded. And, and so I, I can't believe I'm going to say, but, you know, my compliance training was actually fun. So my experience. I'm still bummed that I missed one. Yeah. Because I think because I want to have a perfect score, right? right? See, and never, they dragged you in, agree, uh, but you're on track for the perfect score, and then you felt bad. So, uh, but that the point is, it was engaging for you. It was engaging for me. It really changed the experience of something that can be fairly, you know, uh, uh, blasé. And um, I think that's really the idea. Interesting. What what will come if you have great employee engagement? What type of results do you see? Does it drive revenue or is it productivity? Why, why invest in this? I think it drives all of the above because the idea is it's engagement really drives productivity. So if we're not wasting your time uh, and if we're not putting processes in front of you that feel like you've gone back in time in terms of technology or how something is done, um, we we believe that you're going to be unleashed then to do uh, you know more innovation to think more creatively because we're not in your way and we're not bringing you bringing you backwards. Um, the other thing that I like about it is that it creates a better connection between our employees and our customers. If you have a higher um, uh, relationship, a more consistent relationship between the way we use technology and the way we pitch technology, sell technology uh, with our customers, it's a more authentic interaction. Um, and at BMC, of course, we're using our own technology quite a bit. Uh, on the IT side, we're power users, as you might expect, for all of our infrastructure management, data center, data center management, uh, performance and analytics tools. I mean, we, we're extremely efficient at BMC in terms of running our, our infrastructure, as you might hope, because we sell <laughs> we sell that uh, great technology to a lot of our customers. And uh, uh, the idea now is to use some of our other technology, like our flagship product in ITSM, my IT. Uh, we purchased HR case management not that long ago and more to now bring the uh, drinking of our own champagne, not just from the IT and, and infrastructure management, but also into the 
employee experience and administration. It's interesting how in just a few years, modern technology went from being solely consumer oriented to now becoming, and then became sort of a nice to have in the enterprise and now is a must have in the enterprise. I spoke to one of our guys who sold to Rolls Royce and uh, top three, four initiatives was a better user experience. Not only millennials, but people in general, do they now demand a consumer style experience at work? Or is that just, it used to be Google have it, Apple has it, you know, so, so that's good. And if you're lucky enough to go work for that, we use, we're just happy we have a job. Is, is this becoming a recruiting weapon, so to speak? Yes, and that really goes yeah. to your other question, which is why is it important? What's the ROI? I think in addition to this closer connection to our customers and the driving of culture when we all feel like we are using better technology, um, there is a direct relationship in terms of winning the war for talent. What's fascinating to me, actually, is that I think everybody, uh, and even in this session, you know, we talk about hot tech companies, Google, Facebook, Salesforce.com, BMC. And um, what I'm starting to see is some really incredible applications of the digital workplace in companies you wouldn't expect. And I think that's both exciting and I think it's necessary for them because, you know, not every company is a hot company. Not every company is an attractive employer and has that brand. And so I think for those companies, it's really, really an imperative for them to differentiate in some way and to be able to drive top talent uh, and keep top talent um, once they're once they're there. So that's what it inspires me is I love talking to some of our customers who you might not expect or companies, you know, that I just flat out admire what they're doing because it's you wouldn't necessarily think that they might be doing this and using technology in this way. And um, what I tend to see is also they're doing it out of necessity. It's either a cost necessity or it's a location necessity. Um, and so I, I just think that uh, in a few years, we'll be seeing the digital workplace really uh, dominate um, a lot of these conversations. It's already one of the most searched terms in CIO, uh, formerly CIO magazine. And so I don't think there's any escaping it. I think the question is, how can we all really be great ambassadors into what does it mean? Why is it important? Why should you do it? What are we learning at BMC um, and how we're helping our customers and ourselves? Mm. I, yeah, I used to gauge emerging technology as it's, it's one thing if it works in Silicon Valley or New York City, but it's not taking off until it's taking hold in St. Louis. And I recently I spoke um, with a customer from Midwest, and I'm thinking these people are not really, they, they all for they sell pipes, and um, they I think they're not going to be that interested in my team. And they said they desperately need it because there's only so many engineers uh, in the mid Kansas, Nebraska area. And if we can show them this, they, there's a high probability they will sign with us, then they will sign with the competition. And I think that's very interesting. It actually, the other way around, it, the digital workplace might actually explode in the Midwest or in more, more not Silicon Valley areas. Um, because that's where it has the biggest impact. So if we were trying to help our customers, what are some of the tips and tricks you can share with them? For example, onboarding is a big pain. Um, how can that be improved? You know, onboarding is, um, for us, we hire over a thousand people a year. And so onboarding is something that we're certainly paying attention to. And, and um, I think about onboarding in terms of sales and marketing. That's what it is. Uh, good recruiting and good onboarding is sales and marketing. So I think to answer your question, for our customers um, and for companies in general, what we need to talk about is really what is the pain that you're experiencing and what's the right response to the pain and and usually there is a disruptive either in the technology or how they can re-envision the processes around the technology or just flat out think differently so i don't think there's one answer i think it's really about what is the partnership with this particular customer or with our our um our ecosystem it might be a partner it might be uh, you know, um, anybody else who's in our ecosystem and, and what are the discussions that we're having in terms of what they need help with? Uh, around the onboarding thing, we do unique things here at BMC. Can you explain that a little bit? So 
I remember when I when we got acquired, but we spent three days filling out paperwork yeah. while buying a new house. So it was a wonderful job. <laughs> Great experience, right? Yeah. So uh, one of the things that we're doing is we're launching a new process to our on onboarding. We've built an onboarding app, and it, it will uh, eventually fully integrate with uh, our other technology and be nested in my IT and, and what we call my BMC. And the idea is um, it's twofold. Um, actually, it's threefold. There are three ways to think about what needs to happen in onboarding. Um, the most important thing is that onboarding should be a reaffirmation that you have chosen wisely. You have chosen the right company, the right job. And I think that's probably the biggest disappointment in most people's onboarding experience is what do we do? We actually spend more of the time focusing on forms, process, policy, and provisioning. Well, that doesn't, that might be interesting, but that doesn't, that doesn't make you feel great. It doesn't reaffirm that you've joined this amazing company. And so the most important part of onboarding is to push the, those process elements, those provisioning elements elsewhere in the process, they should not be day one. Day one then should be a true immersion into the culture of the company you've joined. You should be hit over the head. Uh, for us, we're very remote, we're a very global company, so this sometimes is virtual as much as it is a physical experience, but the objective should be, I've joined an amazing company, I understand the technology, I understand our, our proposition in the market and in our industry. I'm excited by who we are. I understand who we are. Uh, and I've had an, an energetic, affirmational experience. That should be the number one thing that the onboarding delivers on day one. And then after day one, it should be all about productivity. We should be asking you questions. Did you get what you need? If you didn't, here's how to get help. Um, so really, we look at it in that way. We need to remove bureaucracy and technology, specific technology, and focus on culture and people in general and get them up and running as fast as possible. Why is it taking this long before we came up with this in general? Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a yeah. minute. Because you've been in nature for quite a while now. You've seen the, tra yeah. the, the transformation happen right in front of you. Yeah, I think, look, my title here at BMC is now Chief Employee Experience Officer. Uh, that is not. Uh, that was intentional because we really do want to focus on the experience for our employees without thinking of silos, HR, finance, procurement, facilities, you know, what all these administrative silos, including IT, of course. And so for us, we were very purposeful in really focusing on the, the experience. And I think part of why we haven't seen more disruption in the HR space is that uh, with all due respect to my HR colleagues, where I have spent 29 years in HR, we're not really known as a creative, innovative subject matter team. And that needs to change. And I think one of our best partners can be IT. Um, so I'm really excited by this partnership at BMC where we're bringing IT and HR and facilities and community relations, you know, all together. I don't think that will be unusual in a few years from now. Interesting. Okay. How do you see this play out over the next five to 10 years? Every employee is gonna have this Star Trek-like uh, experience and gamification is gonna be part of everything. Are we even eventually gonna get rid of email or is this just incremental steps? What, what's the big, next big thing you, you see on the horizon? God, there's so many things. So many. Work is changing so, so fast. And I think what we'll see is for sure a bigger emphasis on communicating more with the user, in this case, our employees, and really disrupting administrative processes in particular that require a lot of bureaucracy, approvals, um, people, um, and I think by putting things more in the hands of those employees, we will we will really be disrupting the space. It also, as I mentioned earlier, will allow for a lot of feedback that companies can then maneuver around. Um, but I think the real the real benefit, the real change, will be we need to take away from all these employees the administrative burden we place on them. Um, and look at HR as an example. HR places a big tax on employees and managers, whether it's big administrative processes like hiring or like the performance management process. These are things that take way too long. You burn way too much effort. And I would say the return is probably not universally positive. <laughs> so by, by enabling the digital workplace, what we're doing is taking a lot of that 
heaviness out of it in order to then have employees do much more important work that is more customer facing, product facing, innovative, uh, service oriented. Uh, that's the goal. Very interesting. Very interesting. Thank you so much, Monica, for coming back to the zoo. It's always a pleasure having you. Thank you for having me. See you. Thank you. For the rest of you out there, take care. Be safe. Bye-bye.